Hey guys, how's it going? I do a little bit of a video on that electric bike that we put together. I put together, you guys watched, I guess. The uh, outcome of that thing has been great. It's been a blast. It runs awesome. It rides awesome. Uh, I, it cruises at about 20 miles an hour, flat ground, no pedaling. And the range is about 20 miles before the battery shuts off. And when the battery shuts off, it, you, if you reset the key, turn it back on a couple minutes, you get about five more minutes run time. That goes down about two more minutes run time. And, and then it's done. Um, it has a, a scale on the battery, but it's down inside the bag. Turn the key on. So there's a scale roughly right about here in the front. What it shows is on the handlebar, but this is a 36 volt battery on the 24 volt system. So the one on the handlebar just stays full all the time because it never goes down to 24 volts or 23 volts to go see that. It shuts off before that happens. Motor runs cool, no problem with that. Um, it's, I'm very surprised how well everything operates, how it handles and how quiet it is. You run around town, up and down sidewalks and uh, you know, through the pedestrian areas. Nobody gets mad because it's quiet. It's not making any noise. They don't even know it's electric because it's kind of stealth. So uh, I'm really liking it. And I decided to take it a little bit further. And one of the items I want to take a little further is the back rim that is on this bike is a girl's bike, wimpy. Uh, the spoke spread is pretty far apart so it's kind of wobbly wiggly the back tire is, is done you know can't wait for that to blow out so in my travels i've been gathering different things one being this uh this old style tire which is probably not much better but a little better i noticed a crack in it right there and carlisle so anyway that's that guy i also have a three-speed shifter new in the package convert your your three-speed to a sporty click stick and it's got all the goodies inside of it and I need a uh, good three-speed back rim which I've been looking for looking for haven't been able to find one but I did have this thing stored away this is probably one of my first attempts at building an electric bike which is one of those kit motors not the Chinese kit motors, back to, like the Japanese kit, kit motors, and it runs a rub wheel, scrub wheel, on the front tire, and that's what drives it. So, is it? It's okay. Uh, very heavy on the front wheel. It's okay. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. Anyway, it has a nice three-speed back rim, which I uh, think I'm going to try and uh, commandeer. For this purpose and uh, having said that i'll probably put the single speed rim back on this or just leave this for parts or if i find another rim i'll swap them back i'm not sure but i got tired of trying to find a good back rim and so this one is going to donate uh, to the cause if you look at it you can see the spokes are probably twice as much as what's on there the other ones are probably two inches apart these are just over about an inch apart to give you an idea and when you ride the other bike you can feel it you can actually feel the back wheel kind of lethargic and wobble and, and all so this is what this video is going to be about i know it's not a motorcycle but um it interests me and may, may interest some of you if you don't feel like watching it don't watch it and give me a thumbs down because it's not what you wanted to see just don't watch it it's all you got to do all right having said that uh let's go start getting some of this stuff apart and see if we can get it together on the other bike i got them kind of swapped around and uh, this was the old tire that was on that uh, fold-up bike. I think it's uh, had a few miles on it. There's really not much left of any kind of tread whatsoever. I do like the fact that at one time it was like a red line. I like to find one of that, but in this profile tire, this is the correct look, uh, shape of what a muscle bike would have had back in the early 70s. And it's got the cracks in it. But it's got 40 psi in them. They, they seem like they're it's on the external side, not the skin of it. And still a lot better than, better than that. So next is to try to go swap those guys over and get that in there. I could already see the chains, but I have to get a link taken out of it. This rocket's smaller. 
And uh, so, all right, let me go get that up in the air. We'll get that in the hole and we'll see how it fits between the frame rails. Make sure we don't have any issues with uh, rubbing. This one's really kind of close. It, it touches a little here and there, but uh, the rim is kind of uh, kitty wampus. So that's aiding to its issues. I also think they make an orange, like you can get colored tires too. Like, you know, an orange, like the frame or something might be cool. Anyway, so here's the two of them next to each other. You can see the difference in the spoke, how heavy the spokes are on this one and how light the spokes are on that one. Again, you got, you got over three fingers apart in there. And uh, you can't get two inside there. And then the, if you look at them, they're, they're actually beefier than the other ones. So this room's nice and, and true. So I'm going to go stuff that in there and we'll see how well that makes out as far as, uh, again, like I said, clearing everything. So I got it on there. I had to take the air back out of the tire. It was too tight. And that's how much, that's how much chain slop I got. <laughs> I'm going to have to do something about that. But, now oh, the rim doesn't have much air in it, but you can see it's, the rim is fairly true. Once you fill the tire up, the tire seems like it tracks well. Am I the only one that likes that sound? Kind of like putting cards in your spokes. And I ended up taking that many links out. So that seems to be a, a pretty good fit. And it's all bolted up. Of course, the, the nut was shot on one side of it. So I have another one of those bikes out back, that, which my, was my first attempt at electric bike. And uh, so I went and I stole the nut off of that. So two things. One is I got to get this cable now set up and run up the frame. But I think uh, I'm probably going to go and we'll mount the shifter. And then we'll try to make the cable connection between those two points and see how that works out. I also have to, this rim does not have a coaster brake. You just can pedal backwards all you want. So it does not have rear brakes anymore. I still have the original front brakes that are on that hub but uh, I would like to have some rear. So the next item will be stealing probably these guys off of here. And we'll have to figure out some kind of mounting system for that also. So we open the package. This was a yard sale find, I believe. Kind of hurts me even to open the package because I think it looks cool. You gotta crack a few eggs to make an omelet. Let's see how much it costs. Building 19. $3.82. Building 19 was a, um, a clearance store. They used to buy like closeouts of stuff. Look at all that meat. I don't know, that cable doesn't look like it's got a cable inside it, no, does it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I take it back. I've never seen it separated like that before. Ooh, ain't she purdy? She's a purdy thing. Kind of like putting a her shifter in your car, you know? Yeah, baby. All right, let me uh, let me go read the instructions. I know. Actually, it would be more like like that. Yeah, that's what I want. That cable went on there, no problem. You're supposed to cut it down to length. And then you got this guy. It's supposed to thread into the, the back wheel. And uh, then your cable goes into there and you make it adjustable. But there's a problem. Stinking British bikes. And that don't fit that. And we gotta do some modifications. So I'm sure this uh, part of the video is gonna might see him out of place from the rest of it because it's like a week later <laughs> and I you guys probably were in the middle of watching that project go along anyway I'm jumping back and forth back on the electric bike 
that has the three speed shifter all set up. It works awesome. I don't know if I've showed it going through the gears and all, but uh, if not, we'll do it later. Uh, rear brakes. I need to get rear brakes on this thing. I rode it around at the, uh, one of the big car shows. It was awesome, but now I only have front brakes. So I think caliper brakes on the back, but my only problem is trying to figure out what to do for another lever because this guy has this um, monstrosity of a throttle, which kind of takes up you know, quite a bit of it. And then how are you going to work the front and the back brake on the front brake location? So I want to think about that. I have a feeling I'm going to end up with two levers on this side, but I'm not sure. And I don't really want to tie them together because I think that would lose the, uh, the rideability factor in be able to select one brake or the other, you know? So I got to figure that out. I do. So progress. I was trying to set it up on the lower one. I wanted to try to tuck it under here, but between all the, uh, Stuff trying to clean the area with the crank and the pedals and all. Uh, it wasn't working. So I ended up putting it at the taller spot, which it normally is. And again, it's a scrap one off of... Uh, actually, I think it's off the, the fold-up bike. And so I had to go put a shim in it. So it's got a 11mm uh, socket. So if you need an 11mm 11 11 socket, um, that's where it's located. Part of the toolkit goes with it. So it works out pretty good. I ended up having to go both levers on one. So let's see, let's see. that is um, the, rever the back lever and of course the front. So you can grab the back and if you find you need more front, front you can still kind of go and do and feather that into it. That's the best solution I was able to come up with. Cable, I kind of want to tuck it on the back side of it so you don't see it, but it's a bit of a sharp bend. So once I get it out of the stand and take some of the slack up and tie it into the frame with it, I'm hoping to make it like Something like right like that should be okay. It's okay now. It works fine the way it is. It's just that I don't like that angle. All right, so now I need to go on to something else that I have for this. I'm going to go get it out of my uh, V-dub, and I'll be right back. All right, so that's kind of back in uh, shape. The seat's just on there loose. But where I was going now is the bag that the battery is in kind of doesn't balance out the bike. I'm still gonna strap that up better, but uh, it seems like it needs something else on the other side. I really don't wanna put a bag on the other side. I wanna kind of mix it up. So, without well, further ado, this is my idea. Is we're gonna go make a, a baseball rack for some kind of cage that it sits in, and then the bat sits on there, and then a glove sits on that, and it just kind of balances out the other side of the bike. Yeah, no? Something like that, something sissy bar <laughs> so uh, I have to come up with some kind of caging for that to fit in and kind of clamp into the top side plus if uh, anybody cuts you off you already got a weapon of choice right on hand so let me see what I can find for uh, some kind of caging so I walked around the hoard trying to find uh, some stuff to come up with and uh, that's the bat we're going with so I decided to go the other direction because the skinnier part is the handle and it gets fatter as it gets to the end. So I can actually slide it in through a rack, uh, encapsulate the bottom of it and whatever grabs the top of it, it'll uh, be locked in there until you lift it up and out. So I decided to see what I can find. So I can do this without smashing everything on the ground. This is a uh, Suzuki uh, four-wheeler front axle hub cover. It's rubbery, gushy rubbery. And that fits quite nice in there without much slop whatsoever. And then for the other end, this is a VW uh, heater box clamp. And uh, it's adjustable, so I can kind of make it as fine tuning it as I want around the bat. And it's already close enough at wide open. Yeah, it's just kind of, just enough. If I could tweak that, I was trying to get fancy and trying to use some, you know, wacky stuff on it to make it look really cool. But I figured the, those two pieces will work because if you don't have the bat on there, there's just going to be, actually I should show it, huh? So I'm going to attach to that guy right about there, but facing straight. 
Yeah. yeah. You try it. Something like that. So that when the, if and when the bat's not in there, if you go to go pedal, worst thing is you go crash into a piece of nice squishy rubbery deal. All right, I'll get that in a minute. Uh, that's, oh, and then the top one, I haven't figured out how I'm gonna go attach that to that, but I figure I'm just gonna make a clamp of sorts to come off of this bar. And uh, we'll hover right about there, and then the back and slide right down in the, it's holster of sorts, and then we can shove the glove over the top of it. I think it's a better look, so. So, let's get to work. And the great reveal. Ta-da! I ended up putting the glove lower on it. I think it um, balances out the bag better. And I just welded two clamps together, one that fits the bar, and then I welded a stud coming off of that because I have a welder and it's easier. That guy's welded on. And then I cranked it down so it's just like you actually have to kind of twist it a little bit to get it out of there. And then on the bottom, again, it just sits in that that rubber cup of sorts and that just has uh, one screw in the center of it. See how that goes. Worst case, I could put a uh, regular hose clamp around it and you know, maybe rivet it to the hose clamp if I find it needs more strength and it's, you know, it's a little too droopy. I like I like how it bounces out the uh, the saddlebag in the same kind of leather. Is all the colors kind of still jive too? You know, those uh, the browns and the uh, the orange on the frame and the copper wire. So I got to take and kind of clean up this harnessy crap going on over hidden under here. This is the shifter's been added to it. And now we got another cable for the front, uh, the rear brake that needs to be kind of drawn into its its harness of sorts. So I think I'm gonna just kind of I'll put something around this just for now. I want to run it a little bit and just see if I'm happy with where everything's gonna stay. And then I'll probably just cut these off and, and redo it and maybe something else. Let me try to encapsulate all that stuff together in the back. I like it. Doesn't make it too busy. And it kind of really throws you away from that bag. You look at that, you're not going to see an electric bike or where's the battery pack. You're just going to see, ah, that's cool, you know, it cools around with the bat and all, and then he's got a bag on the other side for whatever, balls or that kind of thing. Do I need a ball holder? <laughs> this got to get clean up, cleaned up yet some. Again, this is just run together since the last time. So I want to make it so it kind of sits more tucked in. Hangs a little bit better than the way it is right now. But that is enough for today. I don't know if I, how much I've said, it's about 20 mile an hour on a flat once it gets up to speed and it the battery runs for about 20 miles, which is awesome. And we should still have room to pedal. Well, that should clear. You got three speeds now. You got front and rear brakes. Might do a light or something in the front, but I don't want to take away from the spring or front end, so we'll see. Something in right low. This is low over the wheel or something. All right, guys, now I'm rambling. This should wrap up another video. Again, thanks everybody for watching, comment, and subscribing. And I'll see you on the next one. Later.